Hello, in this episode of To The Point Code, we'll be looking at how to create a to-do app from start to finish using React Native and Expo. Before we start, if you're watching this, I want you to know that your likes and subs are really appreciated as they help me to know that people want this kind of content and I keep on creating them. To start with, let's head to the command line and create our to-do app. So now on the command line, we enter the directory we want to create our app in and use expo init to create the app. For the template, we will select the first blank option under the manage workflow. Once our project has been created successfully, we open it in the code editor. First of all, we change directory into the project. You can use code dot to open it in VS Code, that is if you have it installed. Now in the code editor, we see all the files and folders that have been generated for us. Now back on the command line, let's run our project. We use expo start. We can equally use yarn start. They should open up a page in the browser. Once it has started successfully and the page is open in the browser, we can go ahead to run our project on a device. We can use an emulator or a physical device. If this is the first time you are creating a React Native app, you can check out this video in which we set up the environment necessary for creating an app using React Native and Expo. I will link it up here and also the link will be in the description below. Now let's open Android Studio and start our emulator. Now we can go to configure AVD manager and start our emulator. We created this emulator in our setup video. Once the emulator has started successfully, we can go ahead to run our project on it. As you can see, our app is open and we can see open up app.js to start working on your app on our emulator. So now let's head back to our code editor and set up our work structure. Now let's create a component folder and a styles folder. This styles folder will house the styles for application and will make use of styled components for that. But to make sure we don't waste much time on the styles, I will share this appstyles.js file with you, which you can just copy and paste in the styles directory. This contains some styled components and we will use them in our app. Now in the components directory, let's create a home.js file. Once we are done with that, let's open another command line in the same directory and install a few packages. We we'll install style components and expo constants. These packages were used in the appstyles.js file. Now let's go back to our code editor. Now back to our code editor, 
in the app.js file, we want to make some changes. First of all, let's import our first styled component, which is the container. We need to ensure that the path is correct. Now let's wrap the container around our component. Let's also get rid of the styles. Now as we can see, we have a background. This is from the container component. Now let's change the style of our status bar to light. This will ensure that the content is visible. Now let's go into our home.js file and create our home component. First of all, we import React from React. For now, let's just import text and put in a text placeholder. Now back in the app.js file, let's import home. Remember, this is in the components directory. Let's replace the text with home. And now we can see that this is home is being displayed faintly, and this is fine. Now let's get rid of this import because we will not be using it. And basically we are done for the app.js file. So let's move to the home component and start doing something. Now our to-do app will have a header. So let's create a header file in the components directory. Now in the header.js file, let's create a header component. Now for the header, we will need some styled components, so let's import them. We'll use the header view as a container for our header, the header title to display the text of our header and also the header button will be a button that will put at the right side of our header and the colors contains all the colors that we'll be using in our app to make it uniform. Now let's use them in the header components.
Our header title will be to do's. Now the content of our header button will be an icon. So we need to import that icon from Expo Vector Icons. With Expo Vector Icons, you can get access to most of the icons that you need for your project. Now Expo Vector Icons already comes with Expo. So we just need to import the icon that we want to use. We'll get this particular icon from Antipo. Now let's pass the icon to the header button component. The name of the icon we want is trash. We will give it a size of 25 and a color of tertiary. Remember, we are getting the colors from our appstyles.js file. So now let's go back to the home component and import the header. Now let's replace our text with header. And as you can see, we have a header. Clicking on the trash, the opacity reduces, which means it is a button. Now let's move to our to-do items. For that, we will create another component and we will call it list items. Now let's create the list items component. Now let's use text to put a placeholder in the list items component. Now back in the home component, let's import the list items component. Also, we don't need to include the extensions, so we can clear the .js at the end of the header import. Now because React components are supposed to have one root component, we will wrap the header and the list items in a React fragment, which is just a pair of empty angle brackets. Now we can see that list items here is being displayed. Now for our to-dos, let's create an initial to-dos list. It will be an array of objects. So our to-do have a title, a date and also a key. Don't worry about the format of the date, we'll be able to generate it using one of the date methods. Now let's copy and paste the first to do a few times.
also let's change the keys now we we'll maintain our to do's as a react state so let's import the use state hook from react and use it So we create a state variable to do's and also set to do's as a method to set the value of our to do's. The initial value will be the initial to do's. Once we've done that, we will pass the to do's to our list items component as a property. We also pass the set to do's method to it. Now, if your emulator fails to reflect the changes that you have made, you can click on the emulator and double press R to refresh it. Now, let's head to the list items component and make some changes. Now, to display our list of to do's, we will use a component known as React Native Swipe List View. So we have to install that. So let's head to the command line and install React Native Swipe List View. That's a long name. So we use expo install React Native Swipe List View. So React Native Swipe List View makes it possible to display a list of items which can be swiped. So once it is swiped, it gives you access to other functionalities behind the list item. Now once the installation has completed, let's head back to our editor. Now because we've installed a new package, our server will be destroyed so we have to restart it. So we have to head to the command line running our server, cancel it and start it again using expo start. Once we have done that, we can go ahead to run it on our emulator again. Now we are back to where we were. Now let's take the to do's and the set to do's properties as arguments. Also, let's import swipe list view from React Native swipe list view. This is the component that we'll be using to display our to do's. Now let's get rid of the text. Now the swipe list view takes a data property, so let's apply the to-dos to it. Also it takes a render item property. This will be a component that will be displayed for each item in the to-dos. For this render item, let's import some styled component from our appstyles.js file. You can also get rid of the text import. Now in the render item property, let's return a list view. This list view will contain our to-do text and the date. To display the to-do text, we we'll make use of the to-do text that we imported. Now we need to take in a data argument. And we get the to do text from data.item.title. Also, we need to add a to do date. And similarly, 
we get it from data.item.date. Also, we need to wrap the contents of our list view in a fragment. Now we can see that our list is being displayed. Now we need to give our swipe list view a few more properties. Now it needs another component for the hidden part of the list item. So we will do that with render hidden item. For the render hidden items, let's add a few components to our inputs. This swipe to do text will be used to style our list items when the list has been swiped. Now for the content of our hidden button, it will be an icon so let's import it from Expo Vector icons. Once again, we will use anti pool. So this will be a button to trash our to-do item. So whenever the list is swiped, the trash icon will be displayed, which can be used to delete the to-do item. Now once we've refreshed the app and there are no errors, we can go ahead to add the other properties of our swipe list view. Next, it will take a left open value. This will determine how far the list item can swipe from the left. We also add a preview row key. This will give us a quick preview whenever our app is open to show that the list can be swiped. So one will be the key of the list item that we want to show this preview. Now since we'll be using only swiping to the right, we'll disable swiping to the left for our list. Also we'll apply an inline style to our swipe list view. Now a quick pro tip is that when you visit the browser to the page that is opened by Expo, you will see that at the left side we have connection and we have tunnel, LAN and local. When you are running the project using an emulator, it is preferred to select local before you run it in the emulator. When you use LAN, then it means that you are using an actual device which is connected to the same network as the PC. So we will switch it to local. To make sure that we have the best connection for our emulator. Now before we proceed, let's wrap the list view hidden in a return. Once we do that, we see that our quick preview just worked. Now let's try swiping it manually. We see that on swipe our trash icon is displayed 
which is clickable. Now when we swipe, we want to style the text differently, which we imported the swipe to do text for. So let's use it. To do so, we need to keep track of the state of the list item. So let's import use state from React. We will call this state variable swiped row. We will use this to keep track of the key of the currently swiped row. Now in the render item section, we want to check if the current data item has the same key as our swipe row. If that is the case, then we change our to do text to the swipe to do text. This will change the style of our to do text. So we create another variable row test. So as I said, if the current data item key is equal to the value of the swipe row, we want to make use of the swipe to do text, which has a different style from the to do text. So we will return the appropriate component to use and store it in row text. Now we use the row text to style our to do value. Now we have to find a way to set the value of our swipe row. To do that, we'll make use of two extra properties of the swipe list view. We'll make use of on row open and on row close. So at the bottom, let's add on row open. This takes a function with the current row key as an argument. Using this value, we can set the value of the swipe row. Now on row close, we want to set the value of the swipe row to now. Now let's try it out. We see that when you swipe the row, the style of our to-do text changes. And that is the same situation for all our rows. Whenever we swipe, the style changes, which is what we are looking for. Now the idea is that each to-do item in our list will have two actions. It will be able to swipe to delete and also we can press on it to edit it. Now the list view component that we used made use of a touchable highlight so now let's give it an underlay color property so that we'll see the effect when you press on it let's also give it an unpress property but we'll handle it later Now pressing on the to-do item, we see that our underlay color is working. Also, we need to add an unpressed property to our hidden delete button. To handle this event, we will create a handle delete to-do function. Now this function will take in the room up and also the key of the current data item. The room up comes with a swipe list view and it contains information about all our list items. Now to delete a particular to-do item, let's first assign all our to-dos to a new to-dos variable. We will use the spread operator to spread all our to-dos. I want to find the index of the current to-do item, so we'll make use of the find index. Now in the to-dos array which is stored in the state, we are looking for the particular to-do item in it whose key is equal to the current key of the selected to-do item. Now once we have the index, we will make use of the splice function on the new to-dos array to get rid of the to-do item. Now the first argument to the splice is the index. This locates the particular item in the array. 
and the second argument is the number of elements to remove after identifying the index. We pass one, which means it should get rid of only the item with the index. Now, once we are done, we reset the value of our to dos using the set to dos function. Remember, we are making use of the new to dos. Now, let's pass the handle delete to do function to our hidden button. Now we need to pass the row map and also the data item key. To be able to access that, we first need to take them in as argument to the render hidden item. Once we have done that, we can try it out. And we see that our to-do delete successfully. Now let's handle the delete for our trash button in the header. Now back in the home, let's create a function for handle clear to do's, which will run whenever we press on the trash button in the header. To do this, we just set the value of our to-dos to an empty array. Now let's pass this to our header component. Now inside the header component, let's take in our function. Now let's pass it to our header button component on the onPress property. And that's it, we are done with the header component. Now let's try it out. Once we press on it, we see that all our to-dos are deleted. Now it will be nice if we display some kind of message when we have no to-dos available. So let's do that and we'll do that in the list items component. Now to do that, we'll check for the length of our to-dos array. If the length of our to-dos is zero, we want to display a message. We'll make use of the to-do text component. We'll just say you have no to-dos today. Now let's check for a similar condition for our swipe list view. In this case, we'll check if the length of our to-dos is not zero. Now we need to put all this in a fragment. Now we see that when we press on the clear button, a message is displayed saying you have no to do's today and this is what we want. Now at this point, we have no means to add to our to do's yet. To do that, we want to create a floating button and add a modal to our work. To start with, let's create another component. We'll call it input modal. Now inside the input modal file, Let's create the input model component. We'll start by importing React. Now let's import model from React Native.
Also, let's import some components from our appstyles.js file. Lastly, we need an icon from Expo Vector Icons, but in this case, we will take it from Ant Design. Now, inside the return, let's create a fragment. Now to start with, let's create our modal button. We'll use this button to trigger our modal to show. Inside this button, we'll put an icon from Ant Design. Now let's add an unpressed property to the modal button, which we will handle later. Now back in our home.js file, let's import the input modal and use it. Now I forgot to export the input model, so let's go back to the file and export it. You probably caught it already. Now refreshing the app, we see that our model button is being displayed. Next up, let's go back to our input model and create the model. We we'll supply some properties to the model. Now the visible property will take a boolean value, which will determine when to show the model and when not to show it. To get this value, we make use of state and we will create this state variable in the home.js file. set the initial value to false because in the beginning we don't want the model to be displayed until the button has been clicked or pressed. I will pass the value to the input model. Now back in the input model, we can take in these values. Now on request close, we we'll take a function which will run when the user opens the model and presses on the back button. We will create a function which will handle this and we will call this handle close model. For the time being, this function will set the modal visibility to false.
Now let's go ahead to create the content of our model. We will start with the model container. Don't forget that whenever you start typing and you see a suggestion which is in line with what you are trying to type, you can just hit the tab key to complete it automatically. Now for our model icon, let's copy the icon in our model button and make some changes. We change the name of the icon to edit and we also change the color to tertiary. Now let's create an input and we'll make use of our styled input. First of all, we add a placeholder. Let's give this placeholder a color. Also, let's give it a selection color. This will affect the color of our Keza and also our highlights. Now, we want to keep the value of our text input in a state and keep on changing it whenever there is a change in our text input. Therefore, let's head to our home.js file and create this state variable. We'll call it to do input value. Now let's pass these new variables to our input model. Now back to our text input, when there is a change, we want to set the value of our to-do input value. So the function of our unchanged text takes an argument which is the current value of our text input. Also we want to set the value of our text input to the to-do input value. Lastly. We we'll use our submit editing to handle when a user presses on the done or enter on the keyboard. We will create a function handle submit to handle this. Now let's click on our modal button to see the progress we are making. Now we see that nothing is showing because we have not yet supplied the set modal visible to our modal button. So let's do that now. Now once we do that and press on the button, we see that our modal has been displayed. And clicking on the back button, we see that our modal is no longer displayed. Now let's continue with our modal design. Now at the bottom of the input field, we want to add two buttons, one for accepting the change and also one for cancelling it. To do that, we make use of the modal action group, which is just a container to house these buttons in a row. Note that you can always visit the appstyles.js file to look at the details of each component that we import. Once again, we we'll make use of the ant icon.
for the first one we'll change the name to close and also the size to 28. We also change the second icon to check and also the size to 28. For the color we also change it to secondary. Now let's apply additional properties to the modal action. We supply a color property to it and give it a value of primary. For the second modal action, we give it a color of tertiary. Now since these modal actions are buttons, we we'll give them on press properties. For the first button which is the close, it will be handled by the handle close modal function. The second one which will stand for submit will be handled by the handle submit function. Now in the handle submit, let's just alert submitted for the meantime. Now once we click on our model button, we see that our model is not looking just good yet. That is because we forgot to add the modal view. Let's add it now. We'll put it right after the modal container. Also, let's add a header to the modal icon using the header title. Once we do that and press on our modal button, we see that our modal is looking a lot better now. This is the look we are going for. Now let's go back to our home.js file and create a function to add a to-do. We are doing it in the home.js file because that is where we have our to-dos. Also know that comments are always important. They always provide a reminder of why you did a certain thing. For the handle add to do, we take a parameter which is the to do coming from our input model. Now what we'll do is that we'll create a new to do's array, spread the old to do's in it and add the new to do at the end. When we are done, we'll set our to do state to the new to do's list. At the end, we want to close the modal, so we set the modal visible to false. Now let's pass this function to our input modal. Now inside our input modal, let's take in the handle add to do. Now we'll make use of this handle add to do in our handle submit session. Now to use this handle add to do, we'll supply the to do to it, but the to do must be of the same object format as our initial to do's. So to do that, we'll supply an object. First of all, we'll give it a title, and this will be the value of the to do input value. Secondly, we pass a date to it. And this will be the date at the instance of submission of the to-do. We we'll make use of the date object and the to UTC string method. This will give us a date in the format of our initial to-dos. Now lastly, you have to supply a key to it. Now this key must not be equal to the key of any other to-do object that we have. Therefore, we will calculate this key based on the to-dos that we have in our array. In the end, we want the key to be a string, so let's use the string literals. Now first of all, 
we want to check if our array is not empty. So first of all, we check if we have a valid value at the index of the length of our to-do minus 1. We know that the index of array starts at 0, so we need to reduce the length by 1 to create a valid index. So if this to-do value is not undefined, then we proceed to the other half. Now we want to check for the key of the last item. Now since the key is a string, we want to use int to convert it to an integer. Once we've done that, we want to increase it by 1. So this means that if our array is not empty, we check for the key of the last element, convert it to an integer and add 1 to it and then return the new value as a string to be used as a key for the new to-do. But what if it is empty? If our to-do's array is empty, that means the current input value will be our first to-do and therefore it has to have the index of 1. Therefore, we wrap all this in the parenthesis and supply a fallback value of 1. This will ensure that if our to-do's array is empty, the current to-do item will have an index of 1. Also, right after we've done this, we want to clear the value of our input field. So let's set the input to-do value to empty strings. Now let's try it out. So we forgot to take in the to-do's value, so let's do that now. Let's also ensure that we pass the to-do's to our input model. So in the home.js file, let's check. We didn't do that, so let's do that. We pass the to-do's to it as a property. This will make sure that we can access it in our input model file. So now let's go and run our application again. Now let's try it once again. Let's say we want to go sneaker shopping. Once we submit the to-do, we see that it has been added and the swipe feature works equally fine on it. Now when we enter something in the modal and click on cancel, we want to clear the value in the input field, but this is not the case now. So let's set to do input value to empty string as well when we cancel or close the modal. So let's add it to the handle close modal and this should work fine. Now at this point, we've got the add and delete to work successfully. So we switch our attention to the edit. Now with the edit, if you want to edit a particular to-do, we press on it. Once we press on it, we want the model to pop up with the content of the to-do, which will allow us to edit and also save it. For the start, let's just alert something when we click on a particular to-do. Let's go to the home.js file and create a function. We'll call it handle trigger edit. Because in this function, we want to do something to trigger the model to pop up. Since our list of items are displayed by the list items, we will pass the handle trigger edit to it. Now inside our list items, let's take in the handle trigger edit function. 
I will use it in on press property of our list view. Now as an argument, we want to pass the whole data item. This will enable us to know the particular object to be edited. Now back in the home.js file, let's take in the item. But let's try it out before we move on. I will click on any of the items we see that edit triggered. So now, to proceed with the edit, we want to do a few things. First, we want to store the item to be edited in a state variable. Secondly, we want to show the input model. And thirdly, we want to set the value of our input field to the title of our item to be edited. So let's do that. First of all, we will create another state variable. And in this case, we will call it to do to be edited so that it will be descriptive enough. Now once we do that and try it out, we see that our modal is displayed and the value of the current to-do item is displayed in the input field. Now let's pass the to-do to be edited and also set to-do to be edited to the input modal. Now inside the input model, let's take it in. Now we have a situation on our hand. We are using the same input field or text input to handle both add and edit. So when a user clicks on submit, we need to know when to edit and also when to add a new to do. To do that, we use an if statement to check on the to do to be edited variable. If the to do to be edited has been set, then we go for edit, otherwise we go ahead to add a new to do. We will do that in the handle submit function. So first of all, we check if the to do to be edited has not been set. If it has not been set, we just go ahead to handle add to do. Else, if the to do to be edited has been set, then we'll go ahead to use a new function. We'll call it handle edit to do. It does not exist now, but we'll create it in the home.js file. Now, for the first part, to we'll have a title as the value of the to do input field. Secondly, we'll get the date from the to do to be edited variable. If you remember, we store the whole data item in the to do to be edited variable. We are using this date because the to-do already exists and we are not creating a new one. So we need to stick to the old date and just edit the title. For the key as well, we will take it from the to-do to be edited. We also maintain setting the input field to blank when we are done. In addition to that, when we close the model, we also want to set the value of to do to be edited to now. Now the handle edit to do must be taken in, so let's do that. Now let's go to the home.js file and create it.
So this function will take the edited to do as a parameter. Now once again, we'll create a new to-do array and assign the old to-dos to it. Once we've done that, we'll try and find the position of the current to-do to be edited, take it out and replace it with the edited to-do. We'll make use of the splice function over here too. To replace the to-do item that we have identified, we will pass it as a third parameter to the splice function. Now once we are done with that, we want to set the to-do to be edited to now. and also close the model. Now we have to pass it to the input model. Now let's try it out. Let's try it with a prepare YouTube script. Once we click on it, we have the opportunity to edit. So let's say I don't want to prepare the script again, but I want to prepare soup. Once I edit and submit, we see that our third to-do has been edited. And it didn't add it as a new to-do, but it edited the already existing to-do, which is exactly what we wanted. So basically we are done. And let's try out all the features of our app. First of all, let's clear all our to-dos. Let's add a few to-dos. Now we have about three to do's. Now swiping, we see that our effect works and deleting works as well. So basically, we've been able to create all the features of our to do app. But let's observe what happens when we refresh our app. Now we see that when we refresh our app, regardless of the current state, all the initial to do's that we created are displayed once again. But it would have been nicer if the current state of our to-dos were saved persistently. So in the next episode, we are going to look at how to use async storage to persist the state of our project so that it can be used as a raw to-do app and refreshing it wouldn't affect the current state of to-dos. And that's all for today. If you stay to the end of this episode, I really appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you have not done that already and I'll see you in the next episode.